So before we talk about the software release of Home Assistant for this month, there's two other big things to talk about. So Home Assistant has got a new logo for its 10th anniversary, and also there's a new piece of hardware, the Home Assistant Green. So that complements the Home Assistant Yellow and the Special Edition Home Assistant Blue. In this release, there's more tile card improvements, so it's becoming somewhat of a foundation for the user interface. There's tweaks to the map card, which hasn't seen much love lately, and also a long-standing bug of using password managers when logging in has been fixed. And then you've got the usual improvements as well, new integrations, and also some more integrations that have been converted from YAML into the UI. Firstly, let's talk about the new logo. Ironically, the beta release notes seem to have an image at the top which somewhat resembles the old logo, but I'll cast my opinions aside for now, and it doesn't affect anything else, it's just the logo. So, one thing to note though, is that the Creative Commons license for the old logo doesn't apply to the new logo, so there's now some usage guidelines. The only thing in there that's a bit irritating is no usage of drop shadow. I imagine some creators will probably ignore this anyway. I'm not going to go into any great detail about the new Home Assistant Green hardware, because people like DigiBlur have already done videos on this, so check those out if you're interested in more details. But the way I see it is that this is for beginner techies really. I was kind of hoping it was for non-techies and would get them into the ecosystem, but this isn't it. So hopefully the next piece of hardware that they release will have that and will be a bit nicer. There's quite a few things they need to do in my opinion to actually improve it and aim it at non-techies. Some of the things that I think they need to do is they need to improve the aesthetics. It needs to be a beautiful piece of hardware which doesn't have circuit board showing for starters and something that you could place on a copy table that would look nice in the lounge. You wouldn't want to have any extra dongles or USB extenders either because this doesn't have some of that functionality. And it is a fine balance, I understand that, because balancing the power of Home Assistant with the cost of CPU power means that it will affect the price. So I can understand that. I think what they might need to consider doing in the future is having starter kits, so have sensors or something like that included as well. That's a bit tricky because it's supposed to be agnostic to ecosystems, and that means that you would need to maybe partner up with people, but I'm sure there's a way they could do this. Now let's talk about the tile card changes. So the tile card has seen a lot of love in the last few releases and this one's no different. So this time it's for the climate card. So now you can add presets and you can choose which presets you want to add to the card. You can also choose between having them as buttons or drop down. Drop down is a bit like the old school entity but this looks a lot nicer. And also you can have a tile card now for input selects as well. So this will just make the interface look a bit nicer as a whole. Now let's take a quick look how to do it. So as usual, I've got both versions on the screen. So I've got the September release on the left and I've got the beta release for October on the right. And you can see the dashboards are the same. So let's edit this and have a look at the tile card. So if we look under feature on the left, then you can see there's no more features, just the two we've already selected. And on the right, you can see there's a new one, climate preset mode. So if we click that, then it's added them here. And you can see by default, it's got them in a drop down. But if we do this, then you can see you can select the styles. So you can select drop down or icons, and then you can select which ones you want. So if we do icons, and you can see them all there. And if we remove one of them, then it gets rid of it. So let's save that. And there we go, some nice buttons for selecting the different presets for climate. Now let's take a look at the other addition to the tile card, and that's for input selects. So I'm going to edit the dashboard, add card. So I've got an input select here, and you can see if we go to features again, add feature, there's select options. And then this adds this drop down here, which you can even edit in here, which I think is quite neat. So then press save, done, and we're done. And you can see now this is a lovely input select, it looks a lot nicer than the original one. Well, there's nothing else to show you in the interface for this release, really. But as you can see, with the blind here and the climate control, the tile card's really coming along nicely. For the map card, you can now define whether the entities show the name or the state of the entity. And you can also determine which entities influence the centering on the map. It looks like at the moment these options are only available in YAML rather than the UI, but I might be wrong on this, so leave it in the comments if you think differently. Also, this is a beta release, so they might add that by the time it gets to the general release. 
Now the next one I haven't really come across and that's with password managers when logging in. That's because I don't really log into Home Assistant very often because it normally stays logged in. But apparently there was an issue with using password managers when logging in and that's now been fixed. There are a few other changes to mention starting with the Home Assistant backup size. If you use ESP Home then you should see your backup sizes of Home Assistant reduced as long as you upgrade to the newest version of ESP Home. This is because originally it was caching some of the files into the config folder and now these go into a separate data folder and so they're not backed up with Home Assistant. The HomeKit integration now supports media players. Just make sure your devices are added in accessory mode rather than bridge mode. The Withink Health integration now works with Nabucast's Home Assistant Cloud and this means that now you can get push updates. The Rainbird integration has been improved so that now you see calendars for the schedule of when it's running in Home Assistant and also the System Bridge integration has been updated to support notifications. As far as I can tell, this is similar to Has.Agent that I use, whereby you've got other systems that can report information in Time Assistant, things like CPU and memory usage. Now, a couple of the new integrations I feel I should mention is that there's now a replacement for Dark Sky, which is called Apple WeatherKit. Unfortunately, it needs a paid account, a paid developer account of Apple, so I can't see many people using this, really. Another integration is a SwitchBot cloud integration, which I think is a bit of an odd one because you can already use this using Bluetooth proxy and also Matter as well. IKEA motorized desk control, I think this is quite nice if you happen to have a motorized desk that you can control this within Home Assistant. You can maybe include this as part of your scene so that when you press one button everything just goes in the right position all at once. And a few more integrations that have moved from YAML into the UI. It's another release where I can't really see any major breaking changes. One thing to note is that for backups it used to use UTC time as part of the file name and now instead it uses local time. Well, that's it for this release and for this video, so please comment down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So thanks, until next time.